we go. So I was just saying that, um, and I feel sort of odd popping in at the angle here, but I'm going to be sitting on the couch in a moment. And um, um, I just wanted to be able, you know, obviously be close enough that you guys could hear me. So I was just saying that opened up the window to have a nice breeze coming in and um, it's beautifully green out there and uh, a little bit of the dripping rain happening because it is um, June in Wales. And, um, and this is the very first, this is the first event that I'm holding in this space, which is, it's, it, there's still a couple of boxes to unpack. There's uh, still a couple of pictures to hang, but um, it just feels really special to have you here for um, a litha summer solstice shining bright light ritual um, in this space. So um, if you want to turn off videos so that you're just in your own space, you're welcome to do so. Um, if you want to start uh, the music for the people who are here because we're having uh, music technical difficulties. Um, so I'm not playing music in the ritual itself, but I'm going to see if I can add it in afterwards because um, I do have those video editing skills now. <laughs> so we'll see, fingers crossed, if I can do that. So I'm going to pop off the screen. Um, just allow the gazing at the altar while I preamble us into um, this ritual. And then I will go and um, uh, do my own part of it as well. So, just take a breath and arrive and feel yourself in the space where you are in this time in the year where we sit in the place on the wheel of the year sitting directly across from the winter solstice. This summer solstice festival and celebration invites the celebration of light's attainment. This is the time when that child of the year has become the adult. And though there are still many more miles on this road to travel, there certainly has been a lot of work, a lot of effort. What we have traveled so far, the travails that we have had so far, they warrant acknowledgement. There's also another resonance with the winter solstice, between the winter solstice and the summer solstice, and that is that, alchemically speaking, if one wants to follow that map, the winter solstice aligns us with the alchemical calcination that brings an abrupt change that comes with a shocking inferno. That winter alchemical stage is the changing of everything that starts us on a new path. But the steady heat of the summer sun is more reflective of alchemical fermentation. All that has been experienced, all that has been constructed to this point however imperfectly, has the potential to be transformed into something remarkable if we allow the simmer to happen. So this is actually the stage where true transformation occurs. There is a point in the simmer, there's a points in that sitting in the bubbling, sitting in ourselves, in that observation, where a very subtle 
but monumental shift occurs. And that's where things that seem separate, that seem disparate, start to gel. Alchemically, it's known as the appearance of the peacock's tail, and that's why we have the peacock's tail behind the altar as a reminder that what we are looking for is that evidence that through patience, through sitting in this slow and steady application of the heat, through that steady observation, spirit, our truth has been irrevocably activated. So this ritual, this honoring self ritual, is an invitation to let the sun shine down on your accomplishments. Some of you here are <laughs> coming to this at the noonday sun. So appropriate. And in this ritual, to craft a symbol with your modeling clay, or to craft a base upon which you can include items that are reflective of your own peacock's tail can remind you of that truth that still needs to be distilled, perhaps, refined, but that it can serve as a guide for you. It can hold you steady as you continue on your path. And so in this space, in this moment, eyes open or shut, start to focus on your breath. And with each of four breaths, bring your awareness fully to each of the four directions that surround you and the elements that are aligned with them. Breathe into north and the element of earth. Breathe into east and the element of air. Breathe into south and the element of fire. And breathe into west and the element of water. with each of the next two breaths, bring your awareness fully into the below and the above. Breathe into the below and feel the unwavering foundation of the earthbound material plane. Feel that earth beneath your feet and feel that earth all the way down through the strata, through all the ages, through all the beings that walked in those ages, the ancestors who also held that space. And breathe into the above 
and expand into the limitless breadth of the cosmic plane. with the eons and eons of timeless time has always been. And with your next breath, find the place in the very center in which all of these directions, including the above and below, come together. Breathe into this center, the element of ether or spirit. If you have placed deities on your altar or if you're holding deities in your heart, take a moment to acknowledge their divine presence in this space. And then, taking a couple more deep breaths, know that you, yourself, are also at the center of this sacred space. You too hold space at the very hub of the universe. You are the meeting place of spirit above, matter below, and the magic that surrounds. And so, Begin to focus now on the items on your altar that reflect the accomplishments that you are choosing to celebrate at this time. Just some of all of the accomplishments that you have achieved thus far in your life. If you have a favorite picture of yourself on the altar, bring your attention to that person, allowing a sense of what energy resides within that person in the photo that has the capacity to do all of these wonderful things that have come to your awareness. So when you feel even the lightest touch of that, light the candle, take the clay in your hands and begin to work it gently and steadily until it becomes malleable. We're going to spend quite a bit of time just holding this place. And just be aware that as you work and shape the clay, take time to think about your accomplishments, the ones that you are celebrating, and particularly connecting those accomplishments to the sense of the self that is at the center of each of the events. Focus on the qualities about yourself that you cherish and allow those qualities to find expression, a sense of them, to find expression in the clay. You may find yourself forming a representation of a beloved deity or a power animal or a symbol such as a star or a lightning bolt 
whatever it is, just let it be. Let it come from your soul, not from your mind. And as you are nudged, reach into your cauldron and incorporate those items and those tokens that amplify this sense of self. Knowing that as you honor the divine, so the divine thrills in you. And let this honoring fill every cell with the power of the sun. And just pay attention. You may find as well that there is a particular special token, something that you want to um, place at the very center of what it is that you're crafting. You may even want to enfold something in the clay so it's not even evident to the eye, but you know that it's there. However it is that it calls you to shape. So I'm going to mute and just hold this space.
And for those of you who may still be crafting your clay figurines, um, but if you have uploaded the um, playlist, if you can see right at the very bottom, there is a song by Robbie Williams called Love My Life. And I'm going to invite you to play that now. And listen to, listen to the words. I'm gonna mute here and listen to it from my end and I'll hopefully pop it in. So if the song is complete, and I love those words so much, I am not my mistakes, and God knows I've made a few. I started to question the angels and the answer they gave was you. It's pretty powerful. So I have here five cards in cycle um cycle five <laughs> in cycle five we uh we work with the tarot and uh, i'm so excited that i actually have my cards this time that um uh, them to to draw on but i decided to use the star man um, tarot so before i turn them over I'm going to invite you to close your eyes as you contemplate your craft, your crafted statue or symbol, and pick one, two, three, four, or five. Okay. For those of you who picked one, Six of Wands. So in the Starman Tarot, what I love 
it's um, it has something which is almost like a um, an affirmation. Um, I mean, it's got a lot of a write up in in the book, but there's sort of a, a and crisp, crystallized uh, statement. And for the Six of Wands, which is all about, you know, triumph, and victory achieved, um, getting recognition. But um, the statement is, I lead through example. For those of you who picked number two, The Princess of Pentacles. So she is, her statement, So her statement is, I value all of life. Number three. Oh, there's always got to be one in there, isn't there? The five of swords. It's sort of interesting that well, we don't know what the other two are yet, but that we have the Five of Swords, which, well, arguably sort of a uh, the card of what the lesson of Cycle Five is all about. Um, so it says that this um, message is, I must win at any cost. So it's all about battling the inner demons and um, it says here, uh, a compulsion to win, letting the past pile up, but all of that is what needs to be um, uh, addressed. All of that can be shifted to the peacock of swords. Number four, the king of, oops, can you see there? The king of pentacles. Interesting that he seems to be almost floating in the air, but he does have that, he's tethered. Um, so king of pentacles, his message is, I have mastered the art of success stable and tenacious and number five the four of swords very nice to have the four along with <laughs> with the five The Four of Swords is, I allow myself to rest in stillness. So, just take a moment to take all of that in. Take in the experience, to take in what you have crafted, to take in the honoring of your accomplishments, which is the honoring of you and the energy that you bring to all of that, to the message that you received from spirit through the tarot cards. Bring your awareness once more back to your breath. Taking one last moment to anchor the connection to your sense of your essence. Using either your breath 
or a candle snuffer or um, your chosen method, release the flame from the candle before you. What has been experienced in ritual lives forever in your cells. It need only be called forth from within whenever you choose. So take some time now to move through the directions once more, thanking the elements for helping to hold the space and keep you safe throughout the ritual. Start again in the north and thank the element of earth for providing that stability. And move through to the east. Thank the air for the clarity. Move into the south. Just thank the fire for the energy, the spark. Into the west, thanking the water for all of the beautiful feelings. It gives so much depth and nuance to the experience. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge the below, acknowledge the above. Thank and bid farewell to the deities who have been a part of this ritual with you. And know that the wheel may turn around you, but you are as they are always at the center. And so, just before we close, there is a, a poem that I have here by um, someone called Tess Taylor, called Solstice. So in closing, I will share this. Come on, screen. There. I will share this with you. How again today, our patron star, whose ancient vista is the long view, turns its wide brightness now and here. Below, we loll outdoors, sing, and make fire. We build no henge, but after our swim, linger by the pond. Dapples flicker, pine trunks by the water. Buzz and hum and wing and song combine. Light builds a monument to its passing. Frogs content themselves in bullish chirps. Hoop skirt blossoms on thimble berries fall. Peeper toads hop, lazy. Apex. The throaty world sings, ripen. Our grove slips past the sun's long kiss. We dress. We head home in other starlight. Our earthly time is sweetening from this. So, sweet solstice blessings to you all. Thank you for sharing in this space. We will see you in the moon in another time in the twist of the turn of the wheel. Blessings.